Hello, guys. Here we are at the finals of Gen Con 2015. The grand finals, the not just any North finals. The North American Championship. Lucas Lee has fought his way, beat Pacer last game. Could have been the, the final toll there. Pacer missed it, got behind on that game. Lucas came out on top. Now we're going to the second true final where with both of these guys are fighting for the trophy. We are here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, doing some commentary all the way from uh, Kevin in Tulsa. My name is Steven. And I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Steven. And for those of you that don't know, we are with Team Covenant. You can check us out at teamcovenant.com. Uh, we do all sorts of lovely things for tabletop gaming, or at least we like to think that we do. And uh, both of these guys using dice, but if you're token people, we got data tokens, uh, which you should check out. We've got Lucas Lee on the right. We've got Pacer Stringfall on the left, two absolute titans of Netrunner. I, I would be willing to call them monsters. Absolute monsters, they're, you're they're right. They're both... You don't ever want to sit across from them. No. Unless it's for fun. Not at all. Just casually. Lucas Lee representing the uh, St. Louis area players. Pacer representing Atlanta, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. He's from the, that area with a great group of guys over there. And uh, you couldn't ask for a better final here. Replicating perfection. The critical, now, critical identity <laughs> coming all the way from Worlds 2014 into Nationals 2015. This, this thing is a monster. This matchup also couldn't be a more accurate snapshot of what this meta looks like it right is, now. It is, isn't it? Yep. We have there is Kate, Kate everywhere. There is replicating. replicating everywhere. And there is a small smattering of NEH. And, you know, the interesting thing is that this top 16 was one of the most wildly diverse top 16s that I've seen. We saw Wizards here. We saw, uh, what, the Biotech, the weird mm -hmm. uh, Genteki Biotech. Biotech. We saw Andromeda. We saw Andromeda. We saw a lot of HB. Uh, but ultimately, going to the winner's table is Replicating and Kate. And this game is an intense one. We got five credits on both sides. These guys are ready to start. And Pace is going to kick it off. Starts with the hedge fund. Classic opening click. Classic opening. We're going to see two installs, I imagine. Either remote or two centrals. And installs over both centrals. So two pieces of ice there. Ice, ice. And you'll notice baby. on the flip, Pacer using these snare uh, sleeves. So both players yep. choosing these sleeves as their corporation sleeves. They need that mental advantage. Oh, turn one prepaid. Lucas starting with a turn one prepaid going right into Sure Gamble Money after some drawing. Days. And uh, or some credits back over to Pacer. He's going to draw as the corp here. First click. Second click hedge fund. A lot of money coming down the pipe for these guys. And then that is the uh, the end of the clicks there. Yeah. Pacer probably a little shaken after that last game. His was, noise got way behind, just not how he likes to run it. It was a pretty one-sided game. But we're going to see if he can pull this one out. Lucas sees another prepaid. A dream come true for Kate. Now prepaid uh, voice pad giving you a recurring credit to play events. Especially get out of Kate, who gives you minus one to each hardware. The first one you install each turn. So gets a discount on the discount and then uses it to play a lot of events. That just bursts that economy out of nowhere. Yeah, it's, You'll notice Lucas it's already pretty at 13. Ludicrous. It's ludicrous if you can get it going. Pacer installs in a remote. And, or I'm sorry, creates a remote and then installs outside of it. Tempo over to Lucas. He's going to have to make some calls here. Does he keep setting up? Does he start to apply pressure? He's going to draw a few times. Ooh, an Astralea. Got the Astralea. That's going to be important for him. And now really making his uh, making his decisions. I think he's probably got a lucky find. Looks like he's sitting on. A lot of times uh, in these decks, you don't want to play money just to play money. Only use it when you need to. Yeah, that's to. a fool's errand. It's true. Plays the Astrolab for free and then plays the same old thing. So setting up this board. Daily Business Show gets res for Pacer. He's going to be able to filter this deck, drawing two at the start of the turn and choosing one, putting the other one on the bottom of his deck. Do you know what card I want to trash more than Sundew? Daily business Daily show. business show. All the time, and it's just the worst. At least Sundew only costs a couple. Yeah. You just can't let them consistently have a daily business show or you're going to lose the game. You're going to lose the game. Yeah. And on the other hand, you sometimes just got to gotta suck it up and spin that four even though you don't want to. Oh, definitely. Especially whenever you have 13 credits. I would hate to see a piece of ice go on top of that. Depends on who you are. Yeah, definitely. And both the Ketzels staring us down here. Just staring. Pacer making his choice. I see a Mark II in hand. And he's going to try to make the remote play here. I think this is a wise move. Is it going to pay off for him? So he has an advancement. 
What? A remote, and now he's only sitting on nine credits. He's basically gear checking uh, Lucas here. No breakers showing, no SMC showing. This is huge. If he can score this, if he say? scores a Mark II here, this game looks absolutely incredible uh, for Pacer. An early Mark II can be big. Lucas, although, loves putting pressure on centrals and probably not going to be able to res much here. And sees future perfect. the future perfect. We got a side game going on. Pacer could be in a very tough spot here. He knows exactly how much he needs to res that remote, and I don't know if he can uh, afford to spend money here. Zero to zero, zero he zero. takes three. That is huge for Lucas. Ah. Absolutely massive, and that tells me that Pacer's got a perfect, uh, perfect look over here. He's got to be able to res Eli and something else. Lucas clicks through it. It's, it's just, just a pup. pup. No, he's and he scores no. it. And no. there's the Mark II. Oh what? my gosh, Lucas! Lucas is just ah. dominating here. Pacer having to make the uh, make oh. the gamble here. Does that is he flooded here? That makes me think he's got a lot of agendas in hand. Just a, an awful, an awful turn uh, for Pacer. I can't, like, I'm having problems c creating coherent thoughts right now. Yeah, this is tough. At how ludicrous this opening this is. This is so tough, guys. Just five points up right there. Man, let the speculation begin. My goodness. Pacer probably looking at this game a million times over, trying to see if he had a better out. Got another Mark II in hand. Staring down a few agendas. Installs, draws one for Astrolab. And where do you go from here? Kind of established a, na a stupid uh, remote over there. Just just like, ugh, I don't know. Do you ever, can you ever go back in that thing? Eli Pup is pretty easy to get through. It's very easy to get through. Tough. Pacer, one of my absolute favorite players and favorite people just in general. Goes to R&D, Jackson Howard. Man, game point everywhere right now, Tim. This is extremely stressful. So what does that ice on R&D have to be for him not to res it Trashes there? the Sundew. Toll booth? Yeah, maybe. Something big. Sure gamble. And pad campaign. Sees the res. So Pacer having to try to start to stabilize and play this long game. That's the cards he's getting. Uh, and with daily business show up, he should be able to filter pretty well. And installs in the remote, two credits. So basically saying, Lucas, come in if you want it. I mean, we all know what it is. At this point, he's going to need a new remote for his scoring <laughs> server, right? I mean, he just I mean, he needs a Caprice just or a Batty or both. All right. Maker's Eye. Maker's Eye. This is huge. Doesn't res. Sees one card. Two cards. Future perfect and again. And a future perfect. No way. Side uh, game for the championship, for the trophy. For the all of the beans. For, for all the beans. Zero one to one. To zero. What a bold side game. Pacer going zero and getting it. Goes to the Daily Business Show. Trashes, trashes it. Trashes it. Yeah. And just smart. barely makes it out of this Very turn smart. by the skin of his teeth. Can Pacer, can, can he solidify this game? We've got another uh, prepaid voice pad coming out. Pacer draws his card. Daily business show not around anymore. Did he gain his credit for a pad campaign? Yeah. He was at six before. Okay. Now, here's the question. Do you draw through the feature perfect and put it in your hand? Oh, my gosh. I have no idea. And advances and makes the, the Mark II play. So he's basically saying, get in here and win this Caprice side game if you dare. And a lucky find, tons of money for it. Look at that, it goes from what, four to a million? <laughs> That's pretty much how the math works, I think. So now, Lucas can just... Play his Visage, I think he can sit back here a little bit. He could have very he easily just make his eye. Working through the Netrunner earthquake here. Cyberspace collapsing in front of us. Does Pacer score this one out? <laughs> he knows he's got a future perfect to deal with up top here. He may need that token. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know that it's going to save him. He can All run right, it four so he's times. Start, starting to catch up here. Lucas now runs R&D. Do we finally see a res? If we see a res, that side game is very difficult. <laughs> Unless it's something you can just end the run with. And Pacer's, I don't see how... Pacer's hands go to face here. He's going to have to really think about how this goes. This could have been a mistake. Because Lucas can just run four times, right? If you yeah. can't res this yep. size. Yep, yep. Pacer's going to have to get pretty wild on this. He's going to have to get really wild on this. 
Future Perfect first run. He does have an he does have a run end. I have like a pit in my stomach right now, Steven. So you have to assume Lucas goes zero. Pacers got to go one, but there is where the game begins. Because he, if they both know that, does then Lucas Pacer try goes, to does Lucas try to go one here and just win the game outright? Lucas goes one into one. And that's that's the game. He does oh. it. The gamble pays off. Oh. And that is it. My gosh, guys, we have a storming game here, replicating taken wow. down by Lucas Lee's Kate McCaffrey. Both players just just shaken, just rattled. That is ludicrous. That is so, so fast. Thank you for watching, guys. Special thanks to Fantasy Fight Games for letting us record these and uh, promote this incredible game that they have on their hands. Pacer looking like he's a bit agenda flooded out of the gate there. And uh, Lucas, our new champion. Thank you guys for watching. We're Team Covenant. This is Netrunner. And uh, if you haven't started playing this game yet, what are you doing? Uh, Making get a, mistakes. Get is a what, core set. Get, a, get some data tokens uh, if you already got a core set. And man, just enjoy this experience in this community. We'll see you guys later. See you guys next time. <laughs>